Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. In the previous video we started updating the light set class in order to support point lights and spotlights. Today we'll continue and finish our changes to light set class. We'll start with writing the update transform function, which is fairly easy. Here we get the game entity that is associated with the callable light at this index. Then we get the reference to light parameters and set the light's position. We do the same for light calling info because it also has the position. If it's a spotlight, we also need to set its direction again in both light parameters and in calling info. We can use entities orientation for this. At the end, we set the dirty bits flag for all frame buffers so that this change will be reflected in all GPU buffers. We'll see how this works in the next video. Next is the enable function. It already exists, but we need to expand it to support callable lights. In the last video, I explained how we pack light data in arrays in a way that the data is always contiguous. The enable function plays an important role here because it's in charge of swapping data entries and adjusting the count of enabled lights accordingly. For starters, we need the index to light data. We also take a reference to the member variable that has the light count. Next, we need to handle two options. Namely, the color of this function wants the light to be either enabled or disabled. If the light that we want to enable is not the first disabled light, we first swap it with the first disabled light and then increment the count of enabled lights. If it was the first disabled light, we just increment the count. When we want to disable a light, we check if there are any enabled lights left to be disabled. Then if the light which we want to disable is not the last enabled light, we swap it with the last enabled light and then decrement the light count. Otherwise, we simply decrement the light count. Now we need to write a function that does the actual swap of light data entries, which will also set the dirty bits flags. First, we are going to swap light data indices in light owners. Remember that light owners are in a free list and will stay in the same slot until they are removed. The light data, however, are moved around in order to keep the arrays contiguous. We swap light parameters next, followed by calling info, entity IDs, and owner IDs.
Note that we already did the assertions for owner IDs, so we don't repeat those. However, I do add assertions to make sure that all indices are consistent. At the end, we set dirty bits flags for both entries because they both need to be updated in all frame buffers. That's all for enabling and disabling callable lights. We can continue and write these two functions next. Add callable light parameters function write light parameters at the provided index. To do so, we take a reference to the entry in the callable lights array and use the init info to determine how each field needs to be initialized. This is pretty straightforward. First, we set the common parameters like color and intensity. Then we set the parameters that are specific for each light type. Here we also calculate the half angle cosine of umbra and penumbra for spotlights. Next is add light calling info function. This is similar to the function we just wrote, except it writes to an entry in calling info array. Because light parameters are already initialized at this point, we can copy most of the fields. Note that in both functions we didn't set the position and direction fields, since those are set in update transform function which we wrote earlier. I'll write a separate function to calculate the cone radius for a spotlight, which depends on the cone's length, given by its range, and the largest of the cone angles, given as the half angle cosine of penumbra. For this calculation, we need the sine of angle of penumbra, which we can get from its cosine because of this identity. That's all we need to do in order to add a point light or a spotlight. Removing a callable light is quite easy. First, we disable the light that's going to be removed. This will move the light data to the end of enabled lights array. Then we check if the indices are correct and mark the data by setting the callable owner index to an invalid ID. This way we can check if a light data slot is available when we want to add a new light. This is exactly what we did in the previous video. Finally, the light owner is removed as it was for directional lights. Let me quickly check if we are still able to build and run our project. Note 
Next is the update transforms function, which updates the position and direction of callable lights, but only if they are enabled and there was a change in their transform during the previous frame. In this video, we added a function which we can call to determine which entities in the list of entities had their transform component updated in the previous frame. After including the transform header, we can call this function with the array of entity IDs and the number of enabled lights. In addition, we need to provide a buffer for the function to write back the flags. Therefore, we can add an array of bytes, which we can pass to the function. We resize the array before calling the function. Next, for each enabled light, we check if its transform flag is set. The flags also contain information about which component was changed. For example, position or direction or both. Here we don't care about that, since we update both position and direction in the light buffers anyway. So if the transform component was updated for this light, we call update transform to update our buffers with the latest position and direction of the entity. For the remaining part of today's video, we are going to update functions that set our get various light properties. We also have to add a few new functions for setting and getting the attenuation, range, umbra, and penumbra. Let's start with intensity. To set the light intensity for callable lights, we use the index of light data to directly set the intensity field in light parameters. We also set the dirty bits flag so that the GPU buffers will be updated with the new intensity value. And we can do the same for the light color. Next, I'll add the setter function for attenuation. First, we assert that the attenuation value is not negative. Then we get the data index and set the attenuation like we did for other properties. This time, however, we only need to deal with callable lights because directional lights don't have attenuation. We can set the range in a similar fashion. The cone radius for spotlights needs to be recalculated because changing the range of a spotlight will also change its cone radius. In addition, we need to update the range in the calling info as well. For the umbra, we clamp the value between 0 and pi and calculate the cosine of the half angle. If the penumbra is smaller than the umbra, we need to update it so that it's at least the same angle as umbra. We use the getter function to get the value of penumbra, which we'll write in a minute. We can copy and paste the code for penumbra. 
This time we clamp the value between umbra and pi, since penumbra can't be smaller than umbra. We again calculate the cosine of half angle of penumbra. Changing the penumbra results in a different cone radius, so we need to recalculate it here as well. And we must not forget to set the dirty bits flag. We will write these three getter functions for umbra, penumbra and range after we update the getter for intensity, where we can directly index into the light array and return the intensity value. And we can repeat this for light color. Next, we add the getter for attenuation, which we can Frankenstein together from other functions. We use the same code for getting the range, except we return the range value, obviously. For the umbra, we need to calculate the angle from the cosine value. We use arc cosine to calculate the half angle and multiply by 2 to get the umbra. I know this is less performance than storing the actual angles, but unless we are making a game with hundreds of spotlights that change their cone angles every frame, this is not going to hurt at all. But feel free to store the angles in a separate array if you'd rather not recalculate them. Oh yes, these functions can't be consexpert because they call directx math functions. The last function for today is one that returns the number of callable lights that are enabled. This completes the code for the light set class, at least for now. Next time we are going to connect our light API functions to the ones in the light set class, and we'll also update the 3D12 light buffer class so that it can send our light data to the GPU. As always, thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.